Hello, welcome back. Can you believe we've finished piecing and quilting all of these blocks? So now what we want to do is put them together. There's many ways to quilt as you go, but for this quilt, I'm going to show you the first way that I learned, which gives us a small sashing measuring a half an inch on the front of the quilt. The first thing we need to do though is square up our blocks. So let's do that. I'm going to trim off the excess batting and backing from all of the blocks. So once I have all of the blocks uh, trimmed, the next thing I want to do is measure them. They should be 12 and a half inches, but remember we did some quilting in them, so there's a possibility that they've shrunk somewhat. So what I want to do is find the block that has shrunk the most, and then I want to um, measure them or cut them all to that size. So if I measure this block, it should be 12 and a half, but it is measuring to 12 and a quarter. So I'm going to check all of my blocks to make sure that they are trimmed to 12 and a quarter. And what I'm going to do, if one is at 12 and a half, I am not going to cut it all off of one side. I'm going to trim each side a little bit so that I don't lose too much of the stitching. Once I have all my blocks trimmed, I need to decide on a layout. So here's some possibilities. I can line them up in order. I can uh, create a pattern or I can just place them randomly. So I've decided on my layout and I'm going to start in the top left corner of the quilt and I'm going to start putting these pieces together one by one. So these are the first two pieces I want to put together. I have a strip that's one inch by 12 and a quarter because that's the size my blocks were. And I have another piece that's one and three quarters inches by 12 and a quarter and it has been pressed in half with the wrong sides together. I want to lay the one inch piece over top of my block with the right side of the one inch piece to the right side of the first quilt sandwich. Then I'm going to take the two raw edges and place them along the back side with all of the raw edges here together. And I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch through all layers. It's a good idea to pin it before you start to sew. Okay, so now that I have this stitched, you can see that I've got the right side of this showing on both sides and I've got my little one inch strip here. So this is going to attach to this block. So now what I want to do is take that one inch strip and again the right side of the one inch strip to the right side of the next quilt sandwich. I'm going to place it along here with the raw edge to the raw edge and again I'm going to stitch a quarter inch seam. So this is what it looks like from the front side, just a nice half inch sashing. From the back side, we still have some raw edges showing. Now what you're aiming for is to have the batting butt up to each other here. If this is separated, if there's too much of a gap in there, then you may have to adjust your um, seam uh, your seam because maybe your seam is too much of a scant quarter inch rather than an actual quarter inch. If it's uh, too tight in there then maybe your seam is too big. 
Another thing you can do instead of adjusting your seam is perhaps cut your little strip at seven eighths of an inch or at one and an eighth inch. It's always a good idea to do a test before you actually start these. So don't cut all of your fabrics out and then do one and find out that it's not going to work for you. Just cut enough for one. Do that one and see how it works. Now, this piece is going to come over top of this and cover up that raw edge. The traditional way of doing this is to stitch this down by hand. But what we're going to do is press it over, pin it down, and then stitch in the ditch from the opposite side. So here I've pinned right into the ditch, and then this is what it should look like on the back side. And now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch in the ditch and pull the pins out as I work along. Here's what it looks like on the back when you're finished stitching. Don't forget to refer to the PDF on the Janome blog. Here's a look at the front of the quilt when it's finished. And here's a look at the back. See you here next time when we're going to add machine binding to the quilt to finish it off.